Hello and welcome to Pursuit of Perfect Systems video show coverage for the Festival of Sound Music and Audio show. We'd like to thank our show coverage sponsors, Telerium Q Cables, for helping us make this show coverage possible. So uh, here we've got our anti-vibration demonstration mount. So uh, we are basically on this speaker, we're really focusing on the isolation of parts of the speaker from each other. So we're isolating here the uh, main woofer cabinets, the low frequency cabinets, from the mid-range section, which we call the nest. So um, what we're doing is we're rigidly mounting these plates at the top and at the bottom to the cabinets. So you can see they screw up into this. And then here we've got is the uh, nest and the mid-range section basically floats on gel mounts. So there's uh, small gel rings in here that are sort of pushed into, and that lets the whole section float. So what we've got on this jig here is uh, we've got accelerometers on the front and on the back of this jig. Uh, on the back is basically assimilating the cabinet, and on the front is just showing what vibrations would make it through from the cabinet onto the mid-range section. So if I tap on here, you can see the green line is uh, recording vibrations on the front of the enclosure, and on the red line is when I tap on the back, showing what happens on the back. And what we have here is uh, we're exciting the back of the cabinet with uh, tactile transducers, basically small drive units without the cone. And uh, that's causing a vibration into the cabinet, simulating what happens when the loudspeaker is playing. So you can see here, we've got a very, very strong trace of that vibration on the back of the cabinet and all the way through this enclosure. And this, you're obviously on the video, but you could feel there's a very strong vibration coming through this. And on the front, the green, the green trace, which is from the front, there's just absolutely no trace of that vibration. And if you feel here and then feel to here, there's absolutely eliminated the vibration. So it's completely isolating the two sections of the cabinet and from the mid-range from each other. Now, um, we've taken this a step further, and uh, well, yeah, I'll just show you here. You can actually tap on the side of the cabinet, and it just doesn't show up on the, on the green trace at all. So you can show that we really are isolating the mid-range section from the cabinet. So the benefit of that is to keep the base away from your mid-range yeah, to stop it colouring exactly. the mid-range. So yeah. what it does is it stops uh, any vibrations from the woofers mm -hmm. and from the base. Uh, muddying up the mid-range, mm -hmm. what you find is a thing called intermodulation distortion, where the slight motion of that bass and the vibrations going through the mid-range drive, it just mm -hmm. changes subtly the, the frequencies that you hear from the front of the, the mid-range. So without that, we've really reduced a major source mm -hmm. of distortion in the loudspeaker. And it does, it's very audible, we've tried it with and without these mounts, mm -hmm. and there's a huge difference in how clear and how well-defined the mid-range is. Now what we've further done is, uh, this tweeter, is mounted on a soft compliant mount as well so if you, you can actually push on it I don't know how well that's going to come through but you can genuinely push on it and the whole thing moves so not only have we isolated the whole nest the whole mid-range section from the rest of the speaker but we've also isolated the tweeter from the mid-range itself the it, so there's yeah. just no interference between all the drivers it's completely a uh, clean signal so what we really wanted with this loudspeaker was just only going to hear uh, sound from the drivers as it's intended and no, no interference sound so uh, here we've got, it is just the aluminium part of the nest. It's milled out of a solid billet of aluminium. Uh, it's got channels in the back for all our cables. So we, we really wanted it to feel like a completely premium product. And it is a premium product, so we didn't want any visible cables anywhere. So we've moved to using proprietary connectors that we developed for this. And uh, all the cabling is completely hidden in this. So it's an incredibly solid, rigid part. And uh, it, again, helps with the... Uh, uh, mass loading these uh, anti-vibration mounts and stops any transmission of vibration through it. It's a very dense piece of metal. Uh, now here we've got the crossover. Uh, it's by far and away the most advanced crossover we've ever developed. Um, it's got provision for both LF and HF tilts up and down. Uh, over here, here there's a big bank of blue capacitors, so over two millifarads of capacitance there, which is a huge amount of capacitance, which allows us to have uh, LF boost and cut uh, at below 80 hertz, which is very, very useful if you've got, uh, say, a bass heavy room. Oh, can... well, so some tone actually in the speakers. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. Speakers. Oh, yeah, wow. so if you've got a, a very sort of boomy room, you can turn the bass down. If you've got a very large room, you can turn the bass mm -hmm. up a bit. So it really lets you customise the speaker. That's kind of done, kind of mechanically in, in the crossover. It's in the crossover, yeah. yeah it's, all, uh, it's all using incredibly high grade components. We're yeah. using Mundorf Supreme Resistors, we're using Clarity Cap, which is another British company mm -hmm. actually, uh, doing fantastic stuff. Um, so, yeah, no, it, it means that the speaker, a lot of people see such a large loudspeaker mm -hmm. and they assume that it's only ever going to work in a massive space. Mm -hmm because it's so huge it must sound terrible in small mm. rooms but really we've got a lot of control on the base mm. and uh, you can actually customise it and make it sound good in whatever room you have okay. so it's quite sort of uh, yeah. Well, sound good in my room if you want to give me a pair so. yeah 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 sure you just take, take, take these ones home we don't need them anymore uh, so this is just various parts showing the metal work so uh, this is uh, the rear chamber on the mid-range driver 
Uh, what we've done with the mid-range is we've modified our existing 75mm soft dome mid-range driver, which is a really world-renowned driver. It's one of the best mid-ranges out there, if not the best in the world. Uh, we didn't need it to go quite as loud in this as it does in some of our larger active speakers. So what we've done is we've bored through the, mid the middle of the pole piece and that's allowed all the back pressure behind the dome to be released into this chamber. And it really opens up the mid-range and gives it a much more airy, detailed sound. So for this, it really is a sort of noticeable improvement over what was already a spectacular drive unit. Now you've also got our new terminals here, which are solid copper with rhodium plating, uh, which we get made specially for us. Uh, the stainless steel feet, which are um, very nice feet. <laughs> to say about. And that, there, there you can see actually the tweeter, which yeah. I, I showed before, which is the compliant mount. So what happens is we clamp that gel ring into the cabinet. And so the tweeter itself is basically floating mm -hmm. on the gel mount. Uh, and it lets it be uh, completely uh, isolated from the speakers. Good idea. Speakers yeah. Good idea. Uh, and this here is just uh, a dummy model of our plinth. Uh, we, again, the, the crossover, we've been really obsessive about our anti vibration in this loudspeaker. The whole crossover is mounted on anti vibration mounts as well. You can just about see them underneath the screws, the small black rubber grommets. And, and that, again, just further isolates the crossover, stops any micro vibrations passing through into that, uh, and just keeps it as clear as possible mid-range and pure sound as possible. And then obviously moving on to the finished product. Yeah. yeah. So here on the loudspeakers themselves, uh, it's a twin transmission line. We've got basically two mm -hmm. base cabinets, four of our brand new uh, six and a half inch flat piston mm -hmm. drivers, uh, which is a new composite weave uh, carbon fibre we've got. It's two layers of carbon fibre which are sandwiching a, uh, a, a damping foam. Mm -hmm. uh, it's incredibly stiff because we've got the carbon fibre weaves opposed so 90 degrees to each other. Incredibly rigid but very light diaphragm. Mm -hmm. Very high excursion driver, so it goes very loud if we need it to. Uh, but it's also incredibly controlled and, and detailed at low level. Um, the side panels, the wings that we've got on them, uh, are again uh, mounted on anti vibration mounts. The whole wing moves, you can see it, it's, oh, wow. it's all compliant mounted. And what happens is uh, the side panel is mass damping the <laughs> side of the panel. So the panels the wings vibrate in antiphase to the vibrations coming from the side of the panel and cancel them out. Oh, wow. So you get no sound emitted from the side of the cabinet, which is again unwanted coloration. Mm. So it's another distortion <laughs> source that we've removed yeah. there. Uh, we've got our so it's making the cabinet work for you as opposed to yeah, it being, exactly. a, being a hindrance. That's exactly. really clever. So instead of having really a, a, annoying vibrations coming from mm -hmm. the side of the cabinet, it, you can damp the cabinets as much as you mm. want. There will always be some vibration from the actual side of the cabinet. Yeah. So instead of just trying harder and harder to mm. uh, come up with new materials to damp it, we thought, let's use it. It's a similar system mm. that uh, buildings use to uh, counteract earthquakes, for instance, uh, and, and it works really, really well. So uh, we get no emissions that we don't want on the side of the loudspeaker. And here you can see the nest again, it's yep. on its compliant mount. You can actually slightly wiggle the whole thing just to show that it is, it is compliant. It does move a little bit in its mount. So if you wiggle that, does it void your warranty? <laughs> we went a bit too hard and twist it out maybe, but it's, it's very firmly in there. We, we've made it quite a solid thing. You have to try hard. And then up, up top we've got uh, the Laman Air Vent, mm -hmm. which we uh, first featured on the 25 series. Yep. Uh, it's it, it, it's uh, basically aerodynamically smoothing the flow of air going in and out of the cabinet. Uh, as we move, as the drivers move in and out and mm -hmm. pressurise the transmission line, a lot of air. And if you put your hand near it when it's moving, mm. when it's actually working loud, uh, an awful lot of air gets forced in and out. And the laminate vent just smooths the flow of air. It makes a lot less chopping noise, a lot less distortion in the bass. Gives you a clearer and more well-defined bass. And can you talk us through the system by any chance? Are you model number of these, but it's uh, AVM monoblocks we're using. Uh, AVM is a German brand that we distribute yeah. here. <laughs> And over here we've got an ABM Ovation PA 8.2 preamp. Uh, I didn't just read that. Um, but that's a very interesting one actually, it's a modular preamp, so you can get cards that will do uh, whatever you need it to do. So I believe you can get digital cards that will go in to give it sort of Wi-Fi connectivity and have it be a sort of streaming device, or you can have it be your analog thing. Okay. We've got a phono card in there, uh, a phono stage in there, and a uh, valve tube. I was about to say that, it's, it's, well. it's got a valve, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, the so you can series. choose to have that or not to have uh, well, that. So you okay. really can customise that to be whatever you like it to be. Yeah. Can you can you change that then? If you if you got bored of the sound, you can maybe yeah, change yeah, it. Exactly. Oh well, that's yeah, fantastic. You can swap yeah. out for a different card and yeah. have a different slightly output, different output yeah. devices yeah. and all, all that. So you can really customise that however you like. Uh, yeah. For sources, we're using down here. It's a Bryston uh, digital player, uh, and then we're also using the Bryston BD3 uh, DAC, which is a really really good DAC. That uh, we're also using the new AVM Evolution R5.3 uh, turntable, uh, which is a really nice unit. And very bling. <laughs>
for all your blue needs. <laughs> the AVM do some very nice looking kit, yeah. to be fair. Hello. Hello. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right. Okay. Five minutes. That's okay. No, no, no. Are you, you're, is this all just. Did you understand that?